Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder 101 Tutorials. I'm Joy Mahone and in this breakout lesson we are going to get creative. We are going to learn how we can modify our swimwear patterns and create some custom elements such as how to create ruching. Can you add or take away sleeves, change the straps, make a two-piece into a one-piece or a one-piece into a two-piece, and really any creative aspect that you want to create out of your swimwear. Now head over to nancysnotions.com if you want to sew with the same fabrics that I'm featuring here. They're all available. We've hand-picked some amazing colors just for you. Well, let's head over to the cutting table and get started. Well, before we get to creative design, I want to take a moment and address a few customizing of the fit of the swimwear pattern. These are really easy adjustments that anybody can do and you can apply them to any swimwear pattern. A lot of fit, preferences that we run into in swimwear really is more preference than it is a fit issue. Now you can get a swimming suit that's too small. So of course you want to start with one that corresponds to your bust waist and hips. And, uh, and that's going to be a great launching off point. But a lot of swimwear patterns are cut differently in the coverage of the hip area. You'll notice on our mannequin here that we have on the one piece Sharon design that this has a more elongated cut. So you're going to see more skin up the hip area. Whereas this uh, two piece one that our team member Jalen had created, it has a little fuller coverage in the, the especially the front uh, area of the brief. So that's going to, again, provide more coverage. So you first want to determine on your body, um, if you have more contour in the abdomen and the tummy, you may want to avoid avoid a really high cut brief because it's not going to necessarily cover everything that might be in this area. Um, and of course, there's a modesty issue if you have preferences in that regard. Now, the Sharon pattern that we're featuring is cut with kind of that more 80s style. Uh, our team member Audra had a little fun making her mock Baywatch swimwear and we had a lot of fun um, kind of laughing about that, but it's really adorable. I mean, everybody looks amazing in a red swimsuit anyway, but it does feature that higher cut hip curve. Not a problem, it's a great pattern, a really good solid one for learning how to line a swimsuit and all the basics. Um, it's the pattern that I I use, I personally do not wear a really high hip curve. So I still use this pattern, but the adjustment is that what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure down on our hip to the location of where we want the coverage to stop. So you're gonna start at your natural waistline and measure down and whatever that increment is, then you're gonna to go to the pattern and you're going to find the natural waistline on your pattern. It will be where the narrow contour is. And then you're just simply gonna measure down the distance needed. So I'm gonna take my Sharpie here and just draw a mock line so you'll be able to see that. Let's turn this just a little bit so you can see that we are now extending the side seam of the swimwear. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to transition into the crotch curve. Now, uh, I'm, I'm one of those that I, I've done this a lot, so it's very easy for me to create a contour. Uh, some of you are gonna have some issues or you're gonna wanna know how exactly do you create the contour. So what I usually do is um, a couple inches up from the crotch area is where kind of I blend that into and then I trace that out. What I'm going to recommend, and it's just a real easy way to address this without having to know any formulas, is that um, because of the stretch, if we use our exact body measurement here, we're adding a little ease, in, a little more than necessary. So this is gonna give us plenty of coverage. Once you sew your swimming suit, and you'll do the same addition on the back of the pattern piece so that they blend, uh, but once you've done that and you've sewn your suit together, before you put the elastic in the leg opening, try it on. And then if you find that you've 
you've added a little too much, you can trim it off in, I usually do about increments of a half of an inch at a time. So you can remove a little bit until you find the right coverage uh, that you want. And then you'll know going into your pattern, you can just kind of go in and remove the amount that corresponds to your adjustment. And that will give you a hip curve that you can then use with that pattern to make it again. Now, if I flip our, our pattern here over, and if I were to extend the back piece, the back kind of has the same issue. This is where our, our bottom or the buttocks area is. And some people are gonna want a higher cut. If you're fuller in the bottom or if you have a dropped bottom, then you're gonna want a little more coverage. And the same thing applies here. You're just gonna kind of blend that in to the seat of the pattern. As you try that on, after you've sewn these side seams together, you will know if you um, have added too much or not. Uh, of course, you can certainly add more if you want more of a hip a hugger or more of a boy short finish across the back, you can certainly flatten that out and get some of that coverage. The great thing about doing this adjustment on swimwear is and it's wide and it's got a lot of stretch. So simply order an additional yard of fabric and plot, plot be generous in your addition. Tr make a sample, try it on, kind of mark out what you don't need. You can still use that as a swimsuit. So you're really not out anything. And then again, place those adjustments on your pattern. So um, I know I took a few moments to talk about this, but it's a really important thing to address because it's a really easy fix. Most of you aren't gonna have pant forms where you can just plot that out on a mannequin. So just that simple addition and blending into the curve, trying it on before you add elastic makes it a seamless transition and easy adjustment to any swimwear. All right, the next thing we wanna talk about briefly is the contour tour of the center front neckline. Now, some of our patterns have a lower or even a, a significant dropped front. I know our Seabright pattern, if you look at the model on that, she has quite a bit of cleavage and it's a fairly low cut in the front. Again, I don't wear that low or open of a swimming suit. Some people will and they're really going to enjoy that. So if you have a swimsuit that's a little too low, remember a majority of the time they're cut on the center fold. So you can simply raise the opening to whatever height and then blend back into your shoulder. Probably a common sense adjustment, but very easy to address. We'll take a, a look here at this two piece and we'll look at an image of that. You'll see that it has the twisted front. And again, that's a real easy one. If that's too low for you, simply raise the center front, blend in, redraw your neckline. It's just a basic flat pattern adjustment. All right, well, the next thing we're gonna tackle is we are gonna look at adding bra cups to our swimwear. Bra cups are a great addition to a swimwear design. Our Sharon pattern actually features a built-in bra shelf. Now I teach a lesson on how you can draft these and having a pattern that already has a bra shelf that corresponds to it is very advantageous. You'll see here that we have the, the lining piece and then the additional lining on the swimwear. But notice how the lining, it's sewn all the way around the edges, but it hangs open. This is great for two reasons. Number one, you don't want to stitch across the, the bottom of that and have that line of stitching on the front, but it also allows you flexibility in adding cups or removing them in the event that they are not in the right location. Now, one thing about adding bra cups is that you have to place them in correctly. So if this, so right here, we've got our little sample. I'm going to flip this over, all right, so that we can kind of emulate the back side of our uh, pattern. So if I'm going to sew these bra cups into the, um, the bralette that's in here, we have a couple options. I can sew it to the outside. You want to make sure that you don't place them in backwards because if you put them in this way with the puffy side out, it's not gonna fit you. So you have to put these in the swimwear with the idea that the hollow part is facing your skin and that your body is going to fill out the space in the bra cup. 
Now, the one thing about bra cups, and we're gonna put a little pattern weight there because the bralette is intentionally made to be smaller. That's the idea. It's a, a bra foundation that is gonna be pulled taut. And you'll notice as I pull that there, it shifts. But it's going to be pulled taut and it should fit smaller than the outer side of the swimsuit. It's your bra. Now you can build these up as fancy as you want and make you know very athletic supports, but we're just gonna address the basic bra cup. You don't wanna space them out the way that your regular bra would be spaced because as it stretches, it's going to put the bra cups much further out than you are on your body. So a good majority of the time, they're gonna fit fairly nested, fairly close together because as the bralette stretches, they're gonna expand apart. So what I usually recommend is to, um, baste the side seam of your swimming suit together and try it on. And then you can just take a little pencil or a piece of chalk and with this on your body, mark two little dots where your bust points are. And then you're gonna remove this from the swimming suit. And then what you'll be able to do is as this relaxes, you'll be able to find the, the bra point on the bra pad and line that up. And so then again, as it stretches, it will be in the correct location. Now um, you can, what I usually do is I like to stitch these into the lining. So it would be stitched in here. And I like to zigzag stitch all the way around here. Now, if you have a very pliable lining in here, you do not need to cut any of that out. If for some reason you have a very dense fabric, then a lot of times what I will do is I will press this flat zigzag around it and then I'm gonna trim away the center section. I'm gonna share a few photos here of some bralettes that I custom create in my studio. Uh, again, you can build straps and add, adjust these and make them very involved, uh, more elastic for compression. But a simple bra cup is a great addition to a lot of swimwear. It provides some modesty as well as some support for the bust area. And again, remember the bra let should always be slightly smaller than your swimwear due to the stretch it will all lay nice and flat and you're going to just enjoy the support that that gives you let's talk compression and creating some tummy panels or using some features that can help minimize our lumps and bumps that may occur underneath our swimwear. Well, what I've done here is I have traced part of the front of the pattern and part of the back. I'm going to remove those because this is e best illustrated on the pattern table. So you can see the outline of our swimwear. Now, what I wanna share with you is, is some fun things that uh, I have used throughout the years. I've done uh, uh, like beauty pageant design, swimwear competition, and there's all kinds of things that you can do inside of a swimsuit using elastic uh, to help provide some compression. Now, what you wanna make sure that you do is you create a lining for your swimming suit. So if you're using a pattern that doesn't instruct you to make a lining, you want to copy it. And again, you'll see that this is our Sharon pattern. It has a lining built into the instruction. So if I grab the lining, it is only attached in the outer edges. Okay. Now we're going to be applying some elastic to the lining and we're going to be zigzag and stitching through the lining. So those stitches will show on the lining, but not on the outside of the swimming suit. And you'll kind of see this illustrated here with the patch that uh, Miss Audra put on her. So there is zigzag to the lining. Now, yes, that does actually translate to the outside because the patch is on the outside. But if this were simply uh, added to the foundation, then that would not show through. All right, so what I wanna address first is the tummy area. All right, so here is the front of our pattern and this, we're just gonna put a big ab, so abdomen, the big tummy area right here. And there, you can really use any size of elastic that you want. If you want a really large compression panel, this is three inch wide elastic and it's very stiff. So it's going to provide a lot of compression. Now, what we're not going to do is pull this so tight that we're creating a lot of gathers, but it, by, by pulling it a couple inches and providing a little 
little bit of support as it stretches around your body it's going to suck suck your you suck you in basically and you can stitch these literally wherever you want to on the pattern so for example if i wanted some compression just to go across the tummy area then on my lining let's plot this out i'll just do kind of a a broken line here to trace it and this is actually what I would do on your lining mark out with a pencil sometimes our sewing chalk doesn't always show on stretch fabric so you can mark it with a pencil and trace that out on on the lining material before you attach it and a lot of times I'll do kind of to a V or you can just have the the panel go across the tummy uh, and then that's going to provide some compression. Another option with the tummy area is to um, cut your lining so that there is a seam in, in the lower portion of the front. So if I kind of make a, a big line here, you would end up having a waistline seam as well. And what this does is it creates a center front and a side front in the lower portion of the, the panty area. And a great way to apply elastic in the center front of the tummy is to make an X. Okay, so let's, well here, I'll just draw kind of uh, part of an X here. So you can create an X that goes across the center front and then you can cap that with the heavier elastic kind of at the, the lower portion. So the whole point is that kind of determine where you want to shape the body and where you want the most compression. And then what you'll do is um, you can just hold this up to your body and kind of pull it until it's kind of smooshing in, you know, whatever you need to hold in. And then you're going to take that to your lining material and zigzag uh, on either side of your elastic and um, build that up however needed. And once you're lining foundation is ready, then you just treat it as if it was one unit and then assemble it according to your instructions. Now, a fun thing that we can do when it comes to compression is we can actually give ourselves a little booty lift. So uh, one thing as, as the body gets older, this is an area on, on the bum or the backside where there is a lot of soft tissue. And that is one area uh, for ladies at least that does tend to to narrow out and become slimmer, but it becomes slimmer because we lose muscle tone and definition. And so the bottom, the bum starts to drop. So if you don't want to be spilling out the bottom of your swimming suit, or you just want a little bit of a lift, you can use, um, I don't really use the really wide elastic, but up to two inches. And basically what you can do is you can create a little bit of an elastic shelf. So I'm just going to kind of draw, draw this in here. And again, you can put this wherever. Sometimes you just have to experiment to find the right placement. Um, a lot of us are doing this for the first time. And if I have a custom client and I've never seen them before, sometimes I have to position this in here, determine if it works. And if it doesn't, then I reposition it. So um, it's not that you're guessing, it's just that this is a functional thing that you are doing to the pattern and not any different than fitting a bra. Sometimes we have to fit a few times to get it right. But you'll see that what this will do is basically create a little bit of a cup. It's like a bra for your bottom. And uh, again, putting that elastic in there and having that stretch so that it just provides some tension helps to kind of lift the skin. So experiment with that. It's a great trick. You can do the same thing up in the bust area in the front as well. So if you want to owe mitt stitching actual bra cups, then you can stitch uh, elastic and form form the, the bra shape uh, into your, uh, your lining and that will provide a little bit of a shelf as well. So just a fun few useful tips and tricks. Some of you will try this and you will really love it. All right, well, if you want to ask questions or comment in the comments about this, I do get a lot of questions on this. Again, very functional tool for your swimwear. All right, well, these are the not so exciting things. Let's jump into some creative design with some fun swimwear fabrics.
let's have some creative fun now with our swimwear pattern. Now I've scaled down the front piece of our Sharon swimsuit and have made some little pint size, half size copies of the pattern just so we can go through some really flat pattern design with the sloper. And there are so many things you can do with swimwear. There's really a style for everyone. So I certainly can't cover every design option here, but let's go through some of the most popular ones and give you some creative ideas. All right, well, on this little design right here, I've sketched out some gathers down the front. And if you can imagine the corresponding side, because this would indicate the center front, this is a really easy design to achieve and it can be very flattering and concealing to areas on the figure. And all you need to do to create this is cut through your pattern from the center front to the edge, to but never through, and then you're gonna spread your pattern open. The great thing about this technique is you can apply these gathers or ruching or make tucks. However you stitch them up, you can place them wherever you want. Maybe you want more gathers at the top and none at the bottom, that is up to you. So what you will do is cut, again, from the center front to the edge, to but not through, and get right up to the edge there. And what that allows you to do is make a hinge on your pattern. Now, the more space you provide in that hinge, the more fabric is going to be allocated to that area of the pattern. That can work to your advantage, that can work to your disadvantage. So keep that in mind, any area you wanna accentuate and don't put a lot of extra fabric in areas where you may not want to accentuate. The other thing is you can certainly uh, be asymmetrical. Maybe you have a little bit at the bottom and a lot at the top because you want a lot of ruching in the bust area. Maybe you're gonna put bra cups in there and you want to fill that up. This is just basic flat pattern 101, a great technique. You can put this on any pattern piece that you want um, and mix and match or insert it in small areas in the pattern. So that one's a really easy pattern. Uh, manipulation to make. All right, let's talk about uh, making a one-piece pattern, a two-piece pattern. And, and again, a lot of these things are really going to be kind of second nature. So if you wanted to make this one piece pattern, a top and a bottom, you first want to determine where you wanna cut your pattern apart and separate it. Are you going to separate it right at the natural waistline or are you going to separate it above or below? Maybe you want to use this swimsuit design and you want to make a swim t-shirt. What you would do is you would determine how long from the center front down the pattern, you want this design to be. So let's just cut across here uh, at, the, at the base of the hip line. And so this will give you, and here basically all I did was cut that apart, but you can now sew your sleeve into the arm opening. You can modify the neckline uh, and you really have just a swim t-shirt. Well, let's take that a little further. We're gonna put the bottom half of the design back on there. What happens if you want to have an upper and lower part with the, the middle being uh, gone? So you're gonna determine where the bust area is, okay? So you will have already fitted your swimsuit on your body. So you're gonna know where the main bust area is and the main bust point is. And that is important because you wanna make sure that when you cut this pattern apart that you don't cut it too high up into the pattern so that you are not gonna have coverage in the bust area. All right, and so we're gonna use this line as our cutting line. And then maybe I want a pattern brief that addresses my natural waistline. So we'll put a big W and an arrow. And then we're gonna remove this center section. Now remember I had earlier cut that pattern apart, so we're just gonna set that there. I do need to point out that when you cut 
your pattern apart in any area of the pattern, you do need to add back seam allowance uh, because there's no seam allowance in here. So if this is going to be your new finished edge, then you want to add some seam allowance or possibly a band, however you want to finish that off. Well, let's take this particular portion of the swimsuit one step further. What I would like to address is what happens if you want to make this uh, a swimsuit that has a neck strap and you do not want the sleeve opening. Well, you can draft that on there wherever you would like it to be. So for example, let's pull this a little closer. We want a band that goes up and around the neck. Okay, so I've drawn that on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and remove that portion of the pattern that I do not need. All right, so we can see now that that is gonna be cut up and the whole shoulder area is going to be open. And then maybe you want to make a, a V-neck or a sweetheart neckline. All right, so I drew a line there and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove this portion of the center front that I do not want, all right? And then the next thing is I'm gonna separate the band because that will be stitched on separately. What we now have is a pattern for the upper bodice that would be more like a bikini or a, a more cropped uh, with a halter design on it. We would take the corresponding back pattern piece and line up the side seam. And what I would probably recommend is just have a straight band that goes across the back that's finished off with this border that at the, at the neckline on the front, you can just elongate that and make a tie that ties around the neck, a very easy design. Now, remember this ruching that we just did a moment ago. Well, what if you wanted to have some ruching in this area? You see this a lot in swimwear, it's very cute. We'll just kind of illustrate that with our, our sketching. So now we wanna add some ruching to this. Well, all we need to do, cut to, but not through, and we're gonna distribute that fullness. So you want at least three, you want more than one cut. All right, so here we now have that, um, that part of the bust area that can be ruched. How would you sew this together? Well, because we've intersected the center front, there is going to be a seam line here. There are a couple ways to sew that. What I prefer to do is make a lining, which will be separate. I cut my lining with no ruching in it. You'll see that right here. Then what I will do is I will cut with the ruching on the fashion fabric, and then I usually stitch these together on this long contour and then gather it up. And then I usually tack that to the lining just to anchor so that any of those gathering stitches do not pop out. And I will put the lining on this piece as is. The next thing to do is to finish off the neckline in the front, and then we are going to add the band to uh, the, uh, the edge and have that wrap around the back if we choose to do so. Uh, and there are a couple different ways or different order of assembly, but that is just a great way to take your basic pattern and really customize it into a, a different style. Um, and we could take this in, in numerous different directions. So just look through swimwear inspiration and get some ideas and start uh, being creative. Well, other things that we can do are color blocking. We have some beautiful wardrobe builder fabrics. These are just a few of the fun colors. So other things that you can do are uh, just add color blocking. Um, let's, I'm trying to think here, what would be a fun creative thing to do? How about we create a diamond shape on our swimwear? And maybe the center front is one color and the outer edge is another. And if you have decorative stitches, stitches on your sewing machine or your serger, then you can do some decorative stitching. You can even do some embroidery uh, on there. That would be a very simple and easy way to utilize different colors of fabric. Maybe you like one of our printed designs and you want print on one area and a solid on another. Um, let's see here, we can add bands, we can add straps. 
there really are so many options. These are just a few. I think you'll get the idea. I would encourage you to have some fun. Uh, you can even just sketch out a little half pattern and start being creative. Make sure you share in the comments some of your ideas and photos so that we will see how your creative swimsuit designs are coming along. Thank you for joining me in this quick breakout lesson for Nancy's Notions Wardrobe Builder May Edition Creative Swimwear Design. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you are notified anytime a new video is available. Well, also share in the comments your successes in swimwear. I can't wait to see what you come up with. The sky's the limit. If you would like to sew with the fabrics and notions that you see featured here, check out all these fabrics and more at nancysnotions.com.